Lower back pain seems to be something that's synonymous with getting older, or it's just something that most athletes deal with, and it's a part of the game. But in this video, we're gonna go over a few concepts in terms of rehabbing and strengthening and moving the lower back that's gonna take your back from being <laughs> sensitive to resilient. A big injury that happens for a lot of grapplers is to the lower back. Whether it's lower back pain, a slip disc, everything else in between, grapplers often complain about having a lot of lower back pain. And a big contributor to having lower back pain as a grappling athlete is not building up the muscular endurance in the lower back. When you are doing things in the standing position or you're even in bottom position, working your guard, oftentimes you're in a hip hinge position where you're bending at the hips and depending on how far you're bending over at the hips, that's, that's gonna put some strain on your low back. So if you wanna decrease the risk of injury to your lower back, it's really important that you build up the muscular endurance in the muscles of the lower back. And you can start doing that by performing something as simple as a 45 degree back extension. And for this, you wanna go down as far as you can comfortably. And when you come up, you wanna focus on arching and really flexing those spinal erectors in the back. You can start doing this for sets of 25 reps and then begin progressing to 30, 35 reps. If you can do three to four sets of 50 reps of continuous back extensions, that's a pretty good sign that you've built up a lot of muscular endurance in your lower back. Another key component to having a really strong lower back is being able to brace your spine with unilateral loading. And a way you can do that is with doing heavy carries only on one side of your body at a time. We have Jimmy House here. He has a kettlebell in one hand and all he's gonna do is he's gonna brace his spine tight, hold that load on one side, and all he's gonna do is just walk forward. You don't need to run forward, you don't need to rush this but walk forward and carry that load and stabilize your spine where that load is trying to pull you downwards. And you fight that by engaging the opposite side of your body. This is a great way to help strengthen the stabilizing muscles of your entire trunk, which is very important for building a strong and protected lower back as a grappling athlete. One of the biggest misconceptions in my opinion when it comes to jujitsu is that a lot of times you'll hear that the term of inverting and guard is bad for your back or bad for your spine. It is not that inverting is inherently bad for your back or spine, it's more so that most people aren't prepared to invert and actually bear the weight of somebody else. So that's where a lot of these exercises come into play. Now, when we talk about strengthening your spine moving laterally, that's where something like a QL side bend comes into play. So the way I set this up is from a standing position, you can also do this on a GHD, but from a standing position, I'm gonna take my free hand and put it behind my head and extend my, my chest forward just like this. Now, unlike an oblique slide bend where I'm trying to actually squeeze my obliques, I'm going to be letting the weight pull me back slightly here, just like this. This is gonna stretch this side of my lower back known as the QL quadratus laborum. And then from this position, squeezing to the other side. So extending here and squeezing. And that's gonna be working the muscles that run next to the lumbar erectors. Inverting is something Jimmy talked a little bit about. And in jujitsu, you're gonna be getting into this position a lot. So you wanna strengthen your back in deep flexion. Most people, when they do back movements, they try to keep their spine in a very neutral position. And generally, this is a good concept, but it's not a bad idea. And it is very okay to slowly allow yourself to get used to doing movements with a rounded lower back because doing that will allow you to feel comfortable in this type of position with load. You can regress it with a little bit of weight and then again, allow yourself to slowly reach down to the point where you can potentially grab a slat board and with a decent amount of weight, allow your lower back to round, doing a Jefferson curl, coming all the way down and then all the way up. Along with that, I talked a little bit about the cables in the podcast we did. But doing rows and these movements with cables is a really good way to allow yourself to experiment with your lower back position. First off, you can grab something like this here. And again, most people would do an RDL in this fashion, but instead allow yourself to round at your back and let the load pull you into that deeper position. Coming all the way down here, coming all the way up. To progress something like this, you can then Grab a slant board. You can progress the weight. Come all the way back. And then once again, 
You don't have to stay in a very neutral position. You don't have to hip hinge. Allow yourself to slowly round at the back. You don't have to do this initially, but you can build up to this all the way down, all the way down, coming all the way up. Now, you can do some of this with a single arm. You can grab something like this cable right here, right? And initially, maybe you're doing a row like this, but we can get some spinal rotation and we can also get flexion if we allow ourselves to use the weight and allow ourselves to round. You see how I'm allowing my shoulder to reach. Then I start reaching through my back. Then I start rotating in this position. All of that movement is going on here. Flexion, rotation, all of that is happening at the lower back. I feel a lot of activation through here too since it's reaching. This is something that I built up to. This is something that I now feel comfortable with, but it allows me to feel comfortable using load to stretch and extend this area. This is why the cable machines are so awesome because it allows you to get into so many different angles that you would not be able to with most gym equipment. Now the last thing, and this is something that you're going to build the ability over time, is most guys, you know, we're trying to keep that six pack. We're trying to keep flexed. And then when we breathe, we start breathing up here. Very shallow breaths. When you breathe, you want to be breathing into the diaphragm. Because over time, when you get used to breathing into the diaphragm, ideally through your nose, we've done podcasts about that, that's going to allow the tissues around this area, not just your abs, but also your whole torso, those tissues will loosen up over time if you're breathing through the diaphragm. And that's also something that in the long term can help you mitigate lower back pain and lower back tightness. The way you breathe is very important. If you enjoyed this video talking about the lower back, then check out this one talking about the knees and this one where we talk about the shoulders. Something's bound to hurt on you right now. I know it. I hope it's not the case, but probably is the case. So you should definitely uh, pick one of these videos.